Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today we're going to be seeing something that I guarantee most of you, definitely not all of you, but most of you have probably never seen before. This is Rolkatsuki in the French Tier 10 heavy cruiser, the Henri IV, and he set this ship up to generate more memes than a radar minotaur and a spotting plane Des Moines combined. If you take a closer look at the minimap, we'll zoom in for you, make it easier for those of you watching this on handheld devices. You might think that there's something a little strange going on with his surface detection range. 20.3 kilometers, that can't possibly be right. Is this some kind of bug? Oh no. Oh no, this is a feature. This is a build that's focused around the unique, or what used to be called the legendary upgrade, for the Henri IV, it's called the Improved Main Battery Loading Mechanism. And that upgrade, along with a few choice skills, is going to do something remarkable. When Rolkatsu presses the fire button, did you see the reload of these 240mm guns? Watch. Slightly less than 9 seconds. <laughs> yes, that is crazy. But there's a method to his madness. Here's how it works. It's all about making sure your ship has the worst stealth imaginable. It's highly counterintuitive, and actually 20.3 kilometers is not the worst stealth that this ship can have. Well, Katsu is getting 3% concealment from his camo. If he'd used the Type 2 camo, which has the bonus to dispersion of shots fired against you, but does not have the concealment bonus, you could have had 20.9 kilometer surface detection range. <laughs> There's the top grade gunner skill. That's basically what this entire build revolves around. That and the improved main battery loading mechanism. The loading mechanism increases your firing range by 8%, reduces your reload by 12%, but increases your detectability by 10% and it goes into the same slot as the concealment module. So, effectively 20% worse concealment because you don't have the concealment module, and this different module increases your detectability by 10%. Now, on top of that, if you also take the heavy high explosive and semi-armor piercing shell skill, you get 10% bonus high explosive and semi-armor piercing shell damage, but you also get a further 15% to the ship's detectability, making your stealth even worse. But the payoff, as the Petra Pavlosk over there is finding out the hard way, is that thanks to that top grade gunner skill, you can rain 240mm shells down on your opponents faster than a Des Moines or Salem can auto-load its 8-inch shells. Also, if you have Jean-Jacques Honoré on board as your captain, it further benefits from an enhanced version of the Adrenaline Rush skill, which was obviously in effect here, and is also why Rolkatsuki is in no rush to pop a heel, because he wants to get the reload buff from the Adrenaline Rush skill. The key skill here, however, is not Adrenaline Rush, although that obviously helps, it's top grade gun, because what that skill does, and you can see that it's pretty much active constantly because of his ludicrous 20.3 kilometer surface detection range, but what the top grade gunner skill actually does is any time there are any visible enemy ships within your standard detectability range, so not when you're firing your guns, not when your ship's on fire, just your standard detectability range, which remember, Rolkatsuki has up to 20.3 kilometers, although if he'd been using a different camo he could have conceivably had 20.9. If there are any spotted enemy ships within that range, your guns reload 8% faster, and all of your secondaries fire 10% faster permanently, but that's not what people choose the skill for. It's the 8% faster reload on your main battery guns. And don't forget, he's also fitted the legendary upgrade, which gives him a further 12% reload reduction on his guns, and the Adrenaline Rush skill is active, which gives you a 0.2% reload reduction for every 1% of the ship's hit point lost. Unless of course you have Jean-Jacques or Charles-Henri Honoré as your captain, and they have an enhanced Adrenaline Rush skill which gives you 0.25% faster reload 
for every 1% of the ship's hit points lost. Which means that this ship is firing 240mm machine guns. <laughs> Yeah. And don't forget, it has a main battery reload booster as well. <laughs> and that's not all. Because if you have a full 21 point captain, you can take all of those skills and the outnumbered skill. And then you just scoot over to the weakest flank, where there are more enemy ships than friendly ships, and what the outnumbered skill does is it not only makes your guns 10% more accurate, it also makes the ship 8% faster. And on this thing, that means you can achieve a top speed of... 48 knots. <laughs> now, before you all think to yourself, I must rush out and try this, bear in mind that there are some massive downsides associated with this kind of build. Aside from the obvious you can be seen from the other side of the map. Because that's the whole point of the build. You want to spend the entire game spotted by enemy ships. So that top grade gunner skill comes into effect and reduces the reload of your guns. But with no rudder modules installed, this thing turns like a brick. And you have to rely on duking, stopping and going and modifying the throttle in order to dodge incoming enemy fire, because there's going to be a lot of incoming enemy fire. That and maintaining the maximum possible distance from the targets that you're shooting at as well to give you time to make evasive maneuvers. And the problem with relying on the throttle is that the Henri IV had its engine power nerfed a while ago, and it does not respond quickly to throttle input. Also, this ship's armour is not terribly good. So while you want to take some damage in order to enjoy the benefit of the Enhanced Adrenaline Rush skill, it's very easy to take too much damage. I mean, you can see that Roll Katsuki is working that throttle like an absolute pro here, trying to make the most of the limited maneuverability and ability to evade shots that he can. And he's doing pretty well. He's obviously had some practice at this, but it is still an incredibly dangerous way to play a ship. If you can master it, however, your damage per minute is going to be off the charts. I mean, the Henri IV is a fairly good DPM machine to begin with, particularly with its high explosive. It actually ranks second for high explosive DPM, joint second place with the Zhao behind HMS Goliath. But of course, if you've taken that heavy HE and sap shell skill, which you will for the plus 15% to the surface detection range, you're getting 10% better high explosive DPM. And then of course, with the top grade gunner skill active, which it will be, because you're constantly going to be spotted, the DPM gets even higher, thanks to the absurdly fast reload, especially as you can see here, with the main battery reload booster running. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. Wow. Here's the danger though, eventually, you're going to take a big hit. But with Enhanced Adrenaline Rush... <laughs> I mean, there we go, yep. No reload booster running, he's got a less than 8 second reload, although he was on far too low health there. He's used his heal for the first time. Recovered some of it, but still, sub 8 second reload. And that's without the main battery reload booster. This is a very cool thing, by the way, Wargaming. Thank you for giving skill indications on screen that update in real time, something we've been asking for for years. Also, I suppose I do have to give them some credit for finally doing a commander skill rework that allows something other than the cookie cutter builds, where everybody takes concealment expert, everybody takes the concealment module, every Battleship has the same build, every cruiser has the same build, every destroyer has the same build, with the exception of the destroyers that don't have torpedoes, but all of the destroyers that don't have torpedoes have the same build. There's nothing cookie cutter <laughs> about this shit. And that's good. It would never have been possible in earlier commander skill reworks, but it's possible with this one. So you do have to give some credit at least 
to wargaming for coming up with a system that allows people to come up with completely off the wall choices like this. Difficult to make it work, you have to be good, but it can work. I mean, I suspect, because this is an incredibly dangerous way to play any ship, that more often than not, you take this ship out with this build, you're going to live fast, die young, and leave a good-looking corpse. But... <laughs> every now and then... Maybe more often than every now and then, if you're any good, you get a game like this. What's his reload now? Holy shit. Am I reading that right? It's difficult to say because he's not firing the guns simultaneously, but I think his reload is definitely less than seven seconds. And that's without the reload booster. I mean... <laughs> that is just ridiculous. <laughs> How can something so wrong feel so right? You know what I find most amusing about this? He's done... 168, nearly 170,000 damage, and he's only got one kill. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, they're still behind as well. The enemy team have two caps, even though they're even on kills. It's that extra cap circle. Oh, and they've just lost a ship. But that extra cap circle is definitely not helping. And that's not really something you can do about an Henri IV with this kind of build. You get spotted from the far side of the moon, you're not going to be sneaking any caps anytime soon. So there's not an awful lot that Rolkatsuki can do about that. Oh shit, that's not good. Shimakaze just popped up right next to the Shikishima. Right. Well, let's do this. High explosive loaded. There goes the main battery reload booster. Embrace the Daka. Oh my god. I think the Shikoshima is probably doomed. There's no way he's going to kill the Shimakaze fast enough. Yep, there go the torpedoes. That's one very, very dead Shikoshima. Hopefully the Shimakaze is not, however, going to get away with it. And unfortunately he did. With the Shikoshima dead, there's nobody spotting the Shimakaze. The Shikoshima did manage to take down an enemy battleship before he went down, so at least it was a points-neutral exchange, but you don't want points-neutral exchanges when you're behind on points. Speaking of being behind on points, if you're wondering what's going on over there with the Daring and the Napoli, who seem to be allergic to getting into that central cap, I have to admit I did wonder what the problem was. The problem, it turns out, is that the Montana over there can see them. And the reason the Montana can see them is because the enemy submarine is in that cap circle, and he's keeping them both spotted. Oh, Shimakaze talks there, but those aren't the problem. Uh, the enemy carrier's doing a pretty good job of keeping them spotted as well. But the Daring's decided to go for it. Which, it turns out, was incredibly brave of him. Oh, there's the Confederate award to go with, you know, everything else. But it's the enemy submarine. The, um... I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it. I keep saying Balao. People keep saying in the comments jingles it's Baleo. So, you know, I don't know. They're probably right, but yeah. He's got the daring. This puts the enemy team more than 300 points ahead. And they still have two caps. So it ain't getting better anytime soon. Rolkatsuki needs to burn down that Montana. If his team is going to stand any kind of a chance. He's spotted of course. That's going to be the Shimakaze. This is the first time in the game he's actually taking cover. Behind islands. In order to not get shot at. And I think that now this is... Oh no, the top grade gunner skill is still active. Well, of course, the Montana is spotted. It doesn't have to be spotting you back, and it's inside his surface detection range, so the skill still works, so the reload is still terrifying. And I do believe he's going to get him. This is the first time <laughs> he's actually <laughs> used cover in the way that you normally see cruiser captains doing. Come on. So many fires. He's got to have it. Yeah, that's a, that's going to be a kill. Come on. Burn. Burn. 
Yeah, there it is. And that's only his second kill with 214,000 damage done. Of course, now he does not have the benefit of the top grade gunner skill because there are no visible enemy ships within detection range. The enemy team still have the carrier. Oh, there he is. Excellent. Visible enemy ship within detection range. <laughs> nice. Going after a nibbleman, of course, is dangerous. Fortunately, he was able to uh, modify speed and rudder in order to dodge those torpedoes, but it's going to take him a while to build up some speed again. In the meantime, he's raking the Immelman with his armor piercing, which is very, very good on this ship, by the way, and has very high penetration. And good alpha damage. He's got the engine boost running. That'll help him with his maneuverability issues, but it isn't going to entirely mitigate it. He did take a couple of bombs there. He needs to finish this guy off before he can cycle more aircraft. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Not with this rate of fire. Is that it? That's it. And there's kill number three. With 266, nearly 267,000 damage done. He does still have more aircraft up, but... The good news is that while he was nailing that carrier, the friendly Napoli came around the corner to find the Shimakaze at point-blank range, trying to ambush him, and got the Shimakaze before the Shimakaze could get him. Serious misplay by the Shimakaze. There was absolutely no way he should have allowed himself to get spotted at a critical moment in a match like this. That leaves just the Baleo over there. See? You can teach an old dog new tricks. There's the last remaining vessel on the enemy team. The team have just flipped Bravo, and Rolkatsuki is about to flip Charlie. And just in the nick of time, because the enemy team are on 905 points. Actually, the last couple of minutes have just been a whole string of last-second saves on the behalf of Rolkatsuki's team. When the Napoli took out the Shimakaze, the enemy team were at 937 points. When Rolkatsuki took out the Immelman, the enemy team were at 943 points. If he'd died instead of the Immelman, this match would have been over. The Immelman might still get him. It still has some bombers up. They've managed to score a hit, they've done some damage, they set a fire, they reset the cap, but that was it. There is no longer an air threat. He is no longer spotted, so he doesn't have the top grade gunner skill running. <laughs> well, I, that's not how it works. There are no visible enemy ships within his detection range. They don't have to be spotting him or not, as we saw earlier with the Montana. But he's going to get this cap flipped. He's managed to stay alive. He's done nearly 270,000 damage. With all three of the caps, which they will have in a few seconds, and less than a minute of the battle remaining, is that going to be enough? Oh, it should easily be enough, even with only two caps. And they've got three now. They're at 890 points. There's only a 15-point difference, so they just have to not die. <laughs> Which means the Napoli and the Montana need to be motoring on out of there instead of trying to find and kill the Baleo. The Baleo's got some torpedoes away, but it doesn't look like he's got any kind of lock. They've managed to go ahead on points. There are barely seconds of this match remaining. There is absolutely no way, even if they tried, that they could lose at this point. And sure enough, it's a win. A very close win, but, well, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Now, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Rolkatsuki has practiced this. Yes, Akazuki. Rolkatsuki is a professional meme generator. He's practiced this. He has what it takes to score 3,000 base experience using this build, and I do apologise in advance to all of the World of Warships players who, as a result of this video going onto YouTube, are probably now going to be saddled with Henri Captains, who saw this video, thought, that doesn't look too hard, <laughs> and then find out the hard way, actually it is. But I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.